Dear viewers, welcome to another video in the series of Minitab tutorials. In some of my previous videos, I have explained how can we validate whether the data follows normal distribution or not using graphical representations. As part of those videos, we understood how we can use a histogram with a fitted line to validate whether the data follows normal distribution or not. We have also seen what is called a quantile quantile plot and based on a quantile quantile plot, how we can validate whether the underlying data follows normal distribution or not. And the third graphical representation is a probability probability plot which is called PP plot and how based on a PP plot we can validate whether the underlying data follows normal distribution or not. I will share the link of these videos in the description. But today's video is about performing a statistical test. Even though we use graphical methods, a statistical test is a much better way of validating whether the underlying data follows normal distribution or not. So today's video is about performing Anderson-Darling test, which is a most commonly used test to check whether the data follows normal distribution or not. As part of this video, we will be understanding what is an Anderson-Darling test is all about, what is its null and alternate hypothesis, how to perform Anderson-Darling test in Minitab and interpret results. So that is what I am planning to cover in this video. However, I am planning to upload another video on how to perform the same Anderson-Darling test in Microsoft Excel. If you do not have Minitab access, how can we perform the same Anderson-Darling test in Microsoft Excel? I will share the link of that video also as part of the description to this video. Let's now get into this video. As I was explaining in the introduction, Anderson-Darling test is one of the commonly used hypothesis testing to test whether the underlying data is normally distributed or not. Basically, Anderson-Darling test is a goodness of fit test. So goodness of fit test is nothing but it is not designed only to check whether the data follows normal distribution or not, but it is designed to check whether the data follows any particular distribution. In this case, we are going to use this test to check whether the data comes from a specified distribution. In this case, that specified distribution is normal distribution. So the null hypothesis for an Anderson-Darling test to check normality will be data comes from a normal distribution. And the alternate hypothesis will be data comes from a or data does not come from a normal distribution. That will be the alternate hypothesis. And the key concept or how the Anderson-Darling test works is it is an extended version or a modified version of the Kolmogorov and Spinoff test, which is another test which I will be explaining in my upcoming videos. So this test as Anderson-Darling test is an extended version. The Kolmogorov and Spinoff test is going to check whether the underlying data is following the probability function of normal distribution, but it assigns equal weightage for all the probability locations. Whereas an Anderson-Darling test assigns a higher weightage for the tail of the curve. So the reason why it is assigning a higher weightage for the tail of the curve is to understand whether you have any kind of non-normal behavior towards the tail of the curve. So that is why an Anderson-Darling test is more sensitive to tail-related non-normalities. Tail-related non-normalities nothing but you have outliers on both sides of your data, both on the higher side as well as on the lower side of the data. So that's what we say this Anderson-Darling test is more sensitive towards tail and any non-normal pattern observed in the tail of the data. And it is best suited for any kind of sample size. So some hypothesis testing for normality test may need certain number of samples. However, Anderson-Darling test you can use it for both small as well as large samples. However, as a thumb of rule, try to see at least you can collect 30 data points for any test for that matter. 30 will be the bare minimum sample size that you will collect. And when we will use it, when we want to understand the outlier, presence of outlier or tail deviations in your data is when Anderson-Darling test is best suited. So the advantages is it is strong to detect non-normality and the limitation is if you have a statistical software like Minitab, doing this test becomes very easy. If you do not have one, then performing this test in Microsoft Excel becomes relatively more complex. 
the test statistics computation is relatively more complex for anderson darling test so here i have given the formulas to calculate the ad value the anderson darling value and from this how will we calculate the adjusted ad and once we calculated the adjusted ad depending upon the ad value how you will compute the p value so these are the three sections anderson darling test statistics formula from that how do we calculate the adjusted ad value and from adjusted ad value how do we calculate the corresponding p value those who have challenges in doing this step by step as a formula you don't have to worry if you have a, a statistical application like minitab you can simply perform the test and make a interpretation based on the p value however others who have an appetite to understand how this anderson darling test value is getting calculated and then from that how the p value is getting calculated i am planning to upload a separate video which is step by step explanation of how do you calculate the ad value and from ad value how do you calculate the adjusted ad value and from the adjusted ad value how do you arrive at the p value and depending upon the p value how do you make the decision so this is a separate video that i am planning to upload i am planning to upload this as a members only video so i appeal to the audience to kindly take membership with i track channel with a very, very nominal fee to understand in depth statistical analysis anyway now we will stick to the mini tab way of performing anderson darling test so when you perform an anderson darling test as i told already the null hypothesis will be the data comes from a specified distribution and while we are performing anderson darling test for a normally distributed data the null hypothesis is the data comes from normal distribution and the alternate hypothesis is the data do not come from normal distribution so when you perform this test in mini tab you will be able to see the p value p value is nothing but the probability value so the probability value the p value if it is less than 0.05 then you can reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis means you will go with alternate hypothesis that means the data do not come from a specified distribution that is called rejecting the null hypothesis and going with alternate hypothesis however if your p value is greater than 0.05 then we fail to reject the null hypothesis fail to reject the null hypothesis means we have to go with the null hypothesis which means the data comes from normal distribution curve or normal distribution so this is the concept under the formula part as i told people who find it difficult to do this step by step calculation as a formula can go for statistical applications like mini tab so now let's see how we will punch in the data get the result and make the interpretation so here are some screens which i already have so let me delete these screens so the sample data that i have in this particular scenario is 30 samples of weight for boys in the age group of 5 years so here i have kilograms of weight for 30 sample individual boys whose age group is 5 years old so i am copying this data and i am taking this data to minita i paste this data in column c1 of minita now i can click on stats i can click on basic stats as i click on stats and basic stats i have an option called normality test so when i click normality test mini tab gives me an option to select the data for which i need to do this normality test which i have done and it also gives me a option to draw percentile lines at x value and y value however i decide not to do it but if you want to draw uh, you know the reference lines at a percentile value or at the data value we can do so however i am not going to do it now and then mini tab gives you a choice to select which normality test that you want to go for you want to go for anderson darling test or you want to go for a rain and joiner test or you want to go for kolmogorov spirnov test so now i decided to go with anderson darling test however in my upcoming videos i'll be explaining about each one of this test in fact we are planning to explain about six different hypothesis testing that is being used to, to check whether the data follows normal distribution or not so as i have selected anderson darling test now i am going to click okay when i click okay i get this kind of an output and this output is what we call it as the probability plot the the one that we have got now is the probability plot so your x axis is the actual data and your y axis is the percentile 
So, if a data follows normal distribution, it is supposed to have certain amount of data falling between average that is the 50th percentile that is average plus one standard deviation, two standard deviation, certain amount of data is supposed to fall here. So, our average is at 18.43. So from 18.43, if I take one standard deviation, which is 1.2, and if I also take minus one standard deviation, which is again minus 1.2, in this area, I am supposed to have 68.3 percentage of data. Similarly, if I take one more standard deviation, I am supposed to have 95.4 percentage of data. And if I take three standard deviation, I am supposed to have 99.7 percentage of data. So this is why Minitab offers us a option to draw the value or to draw the line at the data value. So I'm going to draw the line at 18.4, which is my average and approximately 18.4 plus one standard deviation will make it 19.6 approximately. And 18.4 minus one standard deviation will make it 17.2. So I am drawing a line average plus one standard deviation and average minus one standard deviation. And now if I click OK, what we need to understand is among all the data that we have, among all the data that we have, the 18.43 is falling somewhere at the 49.109 percentile and this other value is 83.42 and the other value is 15.4. Even if you do a rough calculation, 83 minus 15, 83 minus 15 will give you somewhere around 68, 83 minus 15 will give you somewhere around 68. So, the 68.3 percentage of data definitely falls here. So, that is the logic of drawing this particular line. The 68.3 percentage of data is falling here. So, there is a very good chance that this data will follow normal distribution. However, you do not have to make all this kind of you know conclusion. You can simply look at the p value here. The p value here is 0.928. And if you come back to the Excel, we have already given the definition or we have given the decision making parameter p value greater than 0 0.05 fail to reject null hypothesis. That means you have to go with null. So if I copy this graph and paste it here, let me go to mini tab and copy the graph. So if I copy this graph, if I copy this graph and if I paste it here. I can put a highlighter on the p value and then declare this data as normally distributed data. So, I can put a highlighter here on my descriptive statistics. And similarly, I can also put a highlighter here. I can select this, I can put it here and for average plus one standard deviation and average minus one standard deviation, we are approximately covering 68 percentage of the data and that is what you will understand 83.428. If you want to understand this, we can type 83.428 as the upper bound of this line that we have drawn and 15. 484 is the lower bound in a percentile value. So now if I say 83 minus 15, I roughly get 68. And we all know for a normally distributed data, 68.3 percentage of data is supposed to fall between average plus one standard deviation and average minus one standard deviation. So by looking at the p value and by looking at the percentile values that get covered, we can conclude that this data follows normal distribution. One more way of doing this, instead of doing it as a normality test, one more way of doing this is clicking on stats, clicking on basic stats and going to graphical summary. And in graphical summary, I can select the same data, I can click OK. 
and when you click ok you get lot of other information about this data the entire descriptive statistics and here also you will find the anderson darling test to p value and the a squared value a squared is value is nothing but your anderson darling test statistics value so how to calculate this in a excel is what i will be covering in my next video however you can copy paste this data here and you can again put a highlighter on the p value and then based on the p value you can conclude that the data follows normal distribution you can put a highlighter on the p value and with the highlighter on the p value we can conclude that the data follows normal distribution so friends i hope this video was useful for you to understand how to perform anderson darling test in minitab and based on the minitab output screen how you can decide you want to go with null hypothesis or alternate hypothesis in this case because the p value is greater than 0.05 you are going with null hypothesis but as i told in the beginning of the video these test statistics how this anderson darling test statistics get calculated and from that how the p value is getting calculated in case if you do not have minitab how can you perform anderson darling test using microsoft excel is what i am planning to upload as a separate video so here i have broken down this entire formula into smaller pieces why this formula is being used what is the logic behind each of this functions that we are using in the formula and from there how are we calculating the adjusted anderson darling test statistics and depending upon what is your adjusted anderson darling test statistics how the p value formula changes so all this will be explained step by step so that in future if you are in an environment where you do not have a statistical application like minitab but still if you want to make a anderson darling test come up with the p value and based on the p value if you want to make a decision about the underlying data i request you to kindly look into the video on anderson darling test through microsoft excel as i told in the beginning i am planning to upload it as a members only video i make an appeal to all the participants to kindly take a membership with the itrack channel for a very nominal fee we are planning to upload in depth detailed statistical analysis in members only videos so please take up membership looking forward to see more and more of you taking up membership and getting this statistical concept explained or understood through the uh, membership videos thanks for your time for this video see you in the next video